We're gonna get smoke grenades for the next one. Go on. Think of the views. So when you say the word algal bloom, it, it triggers a lot of panic for fishery managers and you see it all over the country that algal blooms, people try to protect their fishery from algal blooms using things like dyes to, to block out the sunlight and minimise any algal growth within their lakes. But I actually get quite excited about algae in my ponds when I see a nice colour to the ponds. I know that the fish are going to do well because uh, that algae holds a great nutrient value to the fish and it, and it prevents sunlight from penetrating to the bottom of the lake bed and, and prevents weed growth. So it's basically doing what lake dyes are doing but it's doing it in a natural way and it's actually providing nutrient for your fishery. So when I see an algal bloom on my ponds I know the fish are going to do really well and I want to kind of sort of squash this algal bloom panic that everyone seems to have. There is a reason to be worried about algal blooms but I'd like to sort of cover a little bit on how you control that, those peaks and troughs and how you can uh, encourage algal blooms in a healthy way and keep them consistent throughout the year because they really do hold great nutrient value to your fish and your fishery and for the thriving food chain and uh, really I want to just want to go into a little bit in this video just to tell you just to try and squash a bit of that panic that a lot of people have and uh, a lot of the issues that come with algal blooms but all the benefits as well because there are a lot. Those loads of different types of algal blooms that you can get, but the five most common types of algal bloom have been examined and, and the protein content is uh, pretty significant in some of them. They can range from anything between 16% and up to 63% has been examined in, in the most common algal blooms that you'll get in sort of a UK fishery. Um, and they also have a great lipid content as well. So anything between four and 10% of fat in, in these uh, algal blooms, you know, it's all free nutrient and uh, free sources of nutrition for your fish that you can get in an algal bloom. So this is the reason why I get quite excited about them and also the studies behind omega-3s. So omega-3s for humans, for us, the, the first source or well, the main sort of source for omega-3 is fish, obviously. So fish are easily processed for meat and filleted for us to get our omega-3s, but the fish actually get their omega-3s from algae. So interestingly, we're actually use, eating the fish to, for their omega-3 value, but they're actually getting their omega-3 value from algae, whereas we're producing fish in our ponds, so the algae is producing omega-3s for our fish. So do we really need to be feeding marine proteins and marine oils to give our fish omega-3 when they're actually getting it from algae? Of course, in a filtered indoor system, when all the algae and the, the single-celled algae is all filtered out, there's no nutrition to the water in an indoor system. So yes, you would need marine oils to give those fish their omega-3 because they need a, a complete diet in those indoor systems because they're getting no nutrition from the water. Whereas in our lakes, if you've got a good algal bloom, then uh, you're giving your fish omega-3. So do we really need to be feeding uh, marine oils, which are very expensive and unsustainable, to our fish when they're actually getting their omega-3 from the algal bloom? So this is another reason why algal blooms are a real great sort of nutrient, free source of nutrition for our fish. You've got the protein content, the lipid content, great carbohydrate value between sort of 15 and 38% in the, in the algae studied. Algae is also the primary source for planktonic species like your, your crustacean species like your daphnia and your copepods, which also have a nutrient value and, and a high protein value and lipid content. So your fish are getting more nutrition from algae and the, the food chain is thriving a lot more. It's much more bioavailable nutrition in an algae system than there is a weed system. So I want to try and crush this thing about um, algal blooms being uh, a scary. Lots of fisheries that are using dyes to block out the sunlight. Uh, uh, to me, it just doesn't sit right with me. I don't like that. I, don't, I think the, the nitrogen cycle is, is the heartbeat of your fishery um, and you really need to maximise and optimise the uh, the, the daylight and the sun and all the, the natural processes of your fishery to get this nitrogen cycle efficiently recycling the nutrient in your water to produce food for the fish, free food for the fish. Um, and that's really how you, how you do it. And, and light is a key part of uh, the nitrogen cycle to convert those nitrites into nitrates, into, into uh, algae, into food. So I think blocking out the sunlight, you're, it's like putting a, a blanket over your, over your uh, vegetable patch to uh, stop weed, you're gonna stop the growth of everything. And I don't like that. I, I think you, you want to be encouraging these natural sources of nutrition. 
algae's come with their um, the risk of respiration, so the re respiratory processes of, of, of algae um, can give you very high oxygen during the day when the sun lights up like it is today. You're gonna, they're going to be producing a lot of oxygen, but they'll be stripping it out at night. And of course, in the peak of the summer when you've got long daylight hours and the, the algae's really producing a lot of oxygen. And then if you have a period of low pressure and really stormy conditions and thunderstorms, then that can kill those single celled algae. And then you get the bacterial processes breaking down those single those algae cells. That's what gives you a, a quite significant oxygen crash. So those are the risks with algae. So how do we protect ourselves against those risks? Well, controlling algae blooms is, is the key to having healthy, healthy, consistent algal bloom in, our, in my ponds. The way we do it is we, you, want, you, you need to understand that a nutrient going into the water versus the nutrient coming out. So we put a nutrient into the water through feeding. You've got, if you've got a lot of trees around your lake, another reason why we don't like trees around our lakes is because you've got the organic loading from the leaf fall from the trees. So this is the nutrient going into the water. How do we get the nutri nu uh, nutrient out of the water? Well, it's broken down by aerobic bacteria called nitrous ammonus. Nitrous ammonus will break down am ammonia and it will produce nitrites. Nitrites are broken down by nitrobacter, another aerobic bacteria, which is healthy bacteria that are breaking down those nitrites and producing nitrates. Nitrates are then absorbed by plants, by algae, by weed, by plants. So this is the nutrient out. So algae, weed, plants. So obviously plants, this is another reason why we encourage planting. You want the plants to be absorbing that nitrate, pulling out nitrate out of the water, and they're not compromising the sunlight because obviously like you see around these ponds you've got lots of marginal plants which aren't compromising the sunlight because they only stand about two or three foot tall whereas trees of course they'll uh, absorb a small amount of nitrate but they're actually compromising the sunlight getting to the ponds is kind of counterproductive and they're obviously putting nutrient into the water through the leaf fall so uh, those are the, you've got the plants that are taking out nitrate so they're going to drop that nitrate level in your pond down so that there's less available for the algal bloom. So that's how we control that nitrate level to get it down to a consistent level all year, rather than if you didn't have the plants, it needs to be absorbed by algae and weed. So you've got a, a huge nitrate availability and the only, the only uh, consumer of that nitrate is algae and weed. If you haven't got any plants, then you're gonna have intense sort of algae and weed growth. And that's how you get that intense algal bloom uh, or that significant weed growth. And this is the next thing you've, in a, in a pond, sort of an outdoor system, you're either going to have a rooted weed system or a, an algal bloom. So if you've got a lot of fish, then they're going to be disturbing the substrate. So they're going to be preventing weed from growing. So you've still got that nitrate availability, but the weed can't grow because you've got the turbidity in the water from the fish feeding and the uh, aggravation of the substrate from the fish feeding as well. So you're not going to have that weed growth. So instead you'll get an algae bloom and that's how you get an intense algal bloom is in an overstock system. Um, and if you have too many fish, then uh, you've obviously got the loading of the ammonia. You've got more food going in. Um, ammonia produced by the fish as they feed in, the feed waste. There's going to be a lot more available nitrate in the water that has to be used by an algal bloom. So that's how you get a significant sort of algal bloom and, and crashes potentially if you have a thunderstorm. If you're understocked and you're very, uh, you know, a low stock water, then the substrate isn't going to be disturbed as much. So. The turbidity of the water is going to be very low, so the sunlight penetration is going to be very high, and then you're going to get significant rooted weed growth. Now, root, rooted weed is fine. It will give less of a what they call diurnal rhythm, which is high oxygen during the day and low oxygen at night, which algae will give you very high peaks, very low troughs if you have an intense algal bloom. Weed will be much more consistent. However, weed is tying in those, it's absorbing those nitrates, but it's just tying in those nutrients that we're after. So like I just, just explained about the nutrient value of algae, weed is absolutely absorbing that and locking that in in the rooted weed structure, which isn't as bioavailable to the fish as an algae system is. So a single celled algae is obviously, the fish are living and breathing in that nutrient rich water. Whereas in a rooted weed system, all those nutrients are packed into that weed. And if the fish aren't actually eating that weed, how often do you see carp going and grazing off uh, weed beds and eating weed is very rare, whereas in an algal bloom they're constantly breathing that nutrient 24-7. Uh, so that's why fish tend to do better, particularly younger fish as well. When fish um, are in their first years of, of growth, they're most nutritionally dependent. Um, so if they're living and breathing in that um, nutrient-rich, high in omega-3, it's, it's protein-rich as well in an algal bloom, that's why smaller fish do really well in a, in a single cell algae system. Whereas in a rooted weed system, when all that nutrient's uh, locked up in that weed, 
those small fish, they can't get to it. They're not going to eat that weed. Of course, you get larger invertebrate species in, um, in weed, but they're only nutriently available to the fish if they eat them and consume them. So the carp has got to actively search out that food item to gain any benefit. Whereas in an algae system, they're almost involuntary feeding on that nutrient that the algae is providing. But hey, this is just my opinion and what I've noticed in the production of my fish at home, they always tend to do better in, a, in, a, um, in an algae system, a single cell algae system, rather than a rooted weed system. I get much better growth when I've got a good algae growth and consistent algae growth all year. It's light and day to me, um, but this is just my opinion. If you've uh, experienced something else or, or noticed something else, I'd be keen to hear what you've seen and what you've learned from it. Um, and uh, you know, there's, there's lots of good men selling uh, dyes to dye, dye your lake. In my opinion, I don't like the concept of it. I think interfering with a natural process and interfering with a nitrogen cycle, is, which is the heartbeat of your fishery, I can't see that as a positive, but I appreciate that a lot of people use them and a lot of people get good results from them and probably see benefits from it. It does its job, it blocks out the sunlight, but again, it's, it doesn't sit right with me. But hey, that's just me, this is just my opinion, and this is just how I grow fish at home and, and how I do it without the use of fish meals, high oil, high fat, high protein. I, I don't need them because I keep my ponds healthy and that's how I do it. <laughs>